Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we get started, I want to just say a big thank you to everyone who left so many uh, con notes on Facebook and sent emails uh, regarding uh, the recent uh, passing of my mother-in-law. Really appreciate all of your kindness and uh, understanding. Again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Well, we have actually too many lost episodes to go through of the same. All of the rest of the mutual episodes of the saint are missing. Uh, the saint uh, left mutual after May the 28th of 1950 and returned on June 11th over NBC in The Adventures of the Saint. And this is where the vast majority of existing uh, transcriptions of the saint exist. NBC during this time had a great parade of mystery programs, and most of them, whether it's Dangerous Assignment or their uh, reinvention of the man called X, they're all uh, in circulation. And so uh, we are going to have a, a whole lot less of the lost episodes. So here now is the first episode of this new uh version of the site for NBC. The title is The Sinister State Sneeze, original air date again, June 11th, 1950. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Oh, I don't think so. Of course, it really belongs to the bus company. Well, would you mind if I sat here? Well, does anybody mind when Santa Claus comes for Christmas? What? I met you very pretty. Please sit down. Oh, thanks. But I sneeze. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, you're a girl of your word. I always sneeze, especially on buses. Why? I don't know. I've been to hundreds of doctors. They don't know either. I once even went to a psychoanalyst. That sounds as if it might have been a good idea. It wasn't. <laughs> Why not? After a while, he began to sneeze, too. <gasps> good time. Thank you. You're cute. <laughs> I rarely sneeze, though. That's all right. Thanks. I sneeze enough for two. But the question is, can two sneeze as cheaply as one? I've been worrying about that. Well, you can stop right now. The answer. I know, because my boyfriend doesn't sneeze much either. Well, perhaps if he practices... His name is Breckenridge. Isn't that silly? Uh, especially since he doesn't sneeze. My name is Peggy. Not at all silly. And your name is? Simon. Uh, the name of the bus is Genevieve, and the name of the city we're in Simon is... Simon what? Uh, me or the city? You're cuter. Simon Templer. <gasps> oh, you're the saint. There's a totally unfounded rumor to that effect. But from what I've heard, you're no saint at all. I'm scared. We're on a bus. I'm still scared. Well, what can happen on a bus except for... <laughs> that. I didn't mean I was scared of you. Please get off the bus with me so that we can go see Breckenridge. Why? He's scared, too. Peggy, please take my word for it. He's got nothing to be scared about. Oh, I didn't mean scared of you. I meant, well, Breckenridge is a prize fighter manager, Simon, and he's scared. Why? His prize fighter's called Benny the Battler. Oh, and Breckenridge is afraid of Benny the Battler. <laughs> no, nobody's afraid of Benny, not even other prize fighters. Uh, oh, we get off here. Nan! Nan, please let us out. Okay, lady. Thank 
you very much. You're real welcome. And uh, now, Peggy, what is Breckenridge afraid of? Murder! <laughs> in a very nice building, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Did you notice all the palms in the lobby? Yes. Breckenridge must love nature. Oh, he does. <laughs> Mr. Breckenridge has just left town for the upper Amazon. Breckenridge, what are you saying? Oh, I thought maybe he was a bill collector. Wait a minute. Who's he? This is the saint, Breckenridge. I don't need one today. Goodbye. Breckenridge, we're coming in. Oh. Uh... Breckenridge has a very fine sense of humor, Simon. I noticed that. You want to make something out of it? Breckenridge, behave yourself. Simon's going to help us. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if you want help, speak real polite to him. Yeah. Well, I don't mind telling you, mister. I'm on a spot. <laughs> Why don't you stop that? I can't help uh, it. You can't help it. Anyway, Saint, I got a boy. Benny the Battler. I see. Benny the Battler. One of the lousiest middleweights that ever fouled up a prize ring. Well, I think I may have seen him fight once in Newark. If I remember correctly, he lost. That was Benny. <laughs> Is he the uh, spot you're on? Well, in a kind of a way. If you ever see my boy in a the ring, then you'll know why I'm disturbed. You're worrying about his health. No, he's healthier than a horse. But there's something else. Saint, all the big gamblers in town are putting all their dough on Benny for tonight's fight at the stadium. Well, perhaps they think he's going to win. This is the lad. Huh. Not even a moron could think that. Well, I don't know. I think Benny might win. So you ain't even a moron. Saint... My boy is tangling with Soldier Jones, a very fine box fighter. It would be an act of condescension on a soldier's part even to let Benny tie his gloves for him, let alone fight him. So why is all the heavy dough riding on Benny? It does seem odd. Matter of fact, I'm betting on a soldier myself. Is that ethical? It's practical. Oh. Otherwise, me and Benny wouldn't eat. They are two fellows who like to eat. Quiet, Peggy. Anyways, that worries me. These gamblers all betting on my boy. Also, the guy who was the boss of this gambling outfit I have mainly got in mind is a guy named Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Sweeney? Mr. Sweeney is a nice, quiet guy who don't look like he'd harm a fly. So? So he wouldn't harm no fly. But when it comes to guys who he is under the impression they have handed him a bad deal, then he is murdered. Now, supposing Benny the Battler don't win tonight. Well, Sweeney could hardly blame you if Benny lost the fight legitimately. Mr. Sweeney ain't the type guy who is interested in what is legitimate. He likes to win bets. So I am on his spot. I can see that. Anybody who ain't blank can see that. But what can you do about it? Well, I... This was my idea, Breckenridge. I, I mean, asking Simon to come here. Because if Simon showed he was kind of interested in your health, Breckenridge, then maybe Mr. Sweeney would be afraid to do anything to you, even if Benny loses tonight. You yeah. see, Simon? Well, I don't know what good my interest in Breckenridge's health would do him. I, I'm not a doctor. Simon, if Mr. Sweeney gets really mad at Breckenridge and Benny, they wouldn't need any doctors. They'd be patronizing the same undertaker. Oh, bite your tongue. But you think that Sweeney might hesitate about doing anything drastic merely because I knew about it? I don't know, but it's possible. And what have we got to lose? My life. Don't be so selfish. Think of Benny, too. All right. My and Benny's life. Well, I'll do what I can, which amounts to what? Breckenridge, give Simon some tickets to the fight tonight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you, but but I'm not sure I'll be any protection. Don't worry about that. Sure, sure, I'll do the worrying. And maybe it won't do any good, but even if it doesn't, I want you to know that even if Breckenridge does get murdered... Don't say things like that. He'll still appreciate it, Simon, to his dying breath. <laughs> Taxi! Hey, taxi! For a moment, I thought you were going right past me. For a moment, I felt like going right past. Louie! Never mind getting friendly. Just get in. Thank you. Benedict Arnold. I beg your pardon? Well-known traders of history, Benedict Arnold. You. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. This afternoon around 3 o'clock, what were you doing? 3? Why, I was riding on a... Uh, 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 don't stop there. You was riding on a what? A bus. Yeah. What's the matter? Somebody suddenly dropped dead left you stuck in a bus company? No. Then what's the idea of riding a bus that I hail in a cab, huh? Well, if I'd taken a cab, I wouldn't have met Peggy. A fine reason. She was following me, Louie. I made it easier for her by getting on a bus. There's so much roomier than cabs. <laughs> all right, I forgive you. <laughs> Thank you, Louie. Perfectly all right. 
Where do you want to go? Uh, the stadium. You call that a place to take a girl? I'm not taking a girl there. I'm going to see the fight. Hey, which reminds me, Louie, I've got an extra ticket. Would you like to join me? Who's fighting? Well, the main event is Soldier Jones versus Benny the Battler. That you call a fight? Benny's going to get murdered. Not Benny, Breckenridge. Huh? It might be fun, Louie. Come on with me. Oh, listen, a fight like that you could smell from New Jersey. But all right. Ah, uh, thanks, Louie. Don't mention it. And in the future, stay off the of buses. Yes, Mother. Mm, Benny's dressing room must be up ahead. What are we going to do? Sympathize with him before he goes in the ring and gets slaughtered? I just wish him luck. Mm, Mr. Templer, he'll need it. <laughs> That's Peggy. Huh? Hey, wait a minute, Louie. The door's open. Benny, don't be a dope. We got all our dough riding on Soldier Jones. Breckenridge, I've been thinking. With what? What's going to happen to my career if I keep on getting laid in the rising all the time? You can always go back to your truck. Besides, the soldier has been making derogatory remarks, you see? <coughs> Gesundheit. What kind of derogatory remarks? About you personal or professional? Derogatory remarks about I stink. Ah. So when I get in that ring tonight, I am going to bat his ears off. Benny, listen to me. First, if you hit him, he is liable to get mad at you and maybe kill you. Uh, Second, if there should happen to pass a miracle and you should lay him away, we all lose our dough. Benny, we gotta die for him. I don't die for that bum. Benny, don't answer me too quick. Think. You know what's happening to the price of fresh meat? Come on, kid. Sounds like the prelim's over. Let's go, Louie. No time to visit now. we better get to our seat. And the less I see you, Benny, the battle, the happier I'll stay. <laughs> He's in quite a spot, though. Unless Soldier Jones kills him inside the ring, Sweeney is likely to kill him outside. <laughs> Goes. Yeah, we got nice seats. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anybody bleeds in the ring, we got a dry cleaning suit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they're off. Yeah, you're thinking of a horse race. Looking at Benny the Battler, how wrong am I? He runs nice. Yes, he does seem to have got on a bicycle. Yeah, but how long can he stay on a bicycle without falling off on his ear? <laughs> this is the fourth round. And, and then he's still on that bicycle. Oh, and the crowd doesn't like it much. You must be under the impression the best way to box fight is to run away. Well, for him, it's probably the safest way. Yeah, the soldier's catching up with him. Benny's wind is failing. Oh, the soldier just donated a very pretty left to Benny's breath bat. Yeah. Ooh, and a right. Oh, and another right. Oh, Benny the battle of Mr. Templer is practical out on his flat feet. <laughs> well, the bell sure saved him that time. Didn't save him. Merely postponed the execution. Fifth round, and I got an idea Benny ain't going to be around for the sixth. Yeah, Benny seems to be looking for the nearest policeman. He's sort of wandering around. The soldier is like, hey! I don't believe it. Benny just threw a punch at the soldier. Hit him, too! Yeah, but hey, the soldier's just falling down. Oh, this here has an aroma, Mr. Temple. That punch Benny landed couldn't have cracked a defective eggshell. Hey! 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 Benny, and I say this in some blankness of mind, has just won. Yeah. With the best invisible punch I ever seen. Must have been quite a punch. The soldier hasn't moved yet. They're working over him in the ring. Come on, I, I think we'd better visit him. Where are we going? Into the ring. Uh, up we go. Okay. Uh, hey, say, did you see what I just seen? I beg your pardon, Breckenny. My boy knocking out the soldier. Yeah. I've seen it myself, but I don't believe it yet. Hey, hey, uh, I knocked him out. Maybe I could box fight for real, huh? <laughs> With one punch, I laid him right on the canvas. He ain't even got up yet. I think I want to take a look at him. His handler's still working over him. He's very horizontal. Yes, Louie. Furthermore, I suspect he needs a doctor. A doctor? You got a yen for medical attention or something? Correction. What he needs right now is a death certificate. <laughs> Pretty mob scene back there in that ring. Soldier Jones dead, a doctor working on him, cops all around. Yeah. Only thing, I don't get it. I'm afraid I did. The odor when I bent over the soldier. Oh, come on in, fellas. <laughs> Hello, Peggy. Hello, Simon. Isn't everything wonderful? Or 
Well, maybe it isn't so wonderful the way you look. The soldier's dead. <gasps> oh. oh. You mean in a kettle if I knocked him out? No, he didn't die as a result of a blow, Benny. Oh. What did he die of? Old age? Where are Benny's gloves? The ones he wore in the ring? Oh, uh, over here, over here where I put them. Oh, thanks. What's up? What's the matter, Saint? Something smells funny to you? Hey, come here. Take a sniff of those gloves. Not too deep a sniff. Okay. I don't, I don't smell nothing. Uh, that may be like a hospital. Like a hospital is very good. What you're smelling is ether. Ether? Hey, wait a minute. Do you mean there was ether on Benny's gloves? The blow which apparently knocked the soldier out was a feeble one, barely grazed the soldier's mouth and nose. Therefore, what knocked him down wasn't the blow, but the ether he inhaled. Hey, are you trying to say I put ether on my gloves so I'd knock the soldier out? I'm not for the moment saying anything about how the ether got there, Benny. What I am saying is that Soldier Jones got a strong dose of ether into him. Add that to the fact that he was strenuously exerting himself, that his heart was under a strain, and your total is simple. He died of ether. There's ether on your gloves, Benny. Uh, hey, Mr. Breckenridge. Don't say nothing, Benny. Uh, yeah. Keep your mouth shut, you hear? Even to the police? Benny. He looked so sad when the cops put the arm on it. Uh, if they can make their case stick, he'll look sadder still. Breckenridge didn't look so happy neither. Uh, it's not hard to understand. One way or another... And that babe Peggy, she was sneezing like a locomotive with a hiccup. It saved her from answering questions. Yeah, all of which doesn't add up to the strange fact that you've instructed me to drive you to the Happy Hours nightclub. It happens to belong to a man named Mr. Sweeney, Louie, the head of the gambling syndicate which bet on Benny in tonight's fight. Oh, Mr. Sweeney ought to be a very happy man. We're not going to watch him rejoice. What are we going to watch him do? Pay off, perhaps? I have been in classier dumps without even leaving my house. The club here is a front for Sweeney's real business, I imagine. Let's see, the man at the door told us his office was behind the bandstand. Well, Breckenridge? Oh, uh, hi, Saint. Well, well, Breckenridge. Counting money in large and luscious quantities and in Sweeney's office. Uh, well, this, this here, you mean it, it? It's it's nothing. It's a lot of nothing. <laughs> I thought you were afraid of Sweeney. Well, why should I be afraid of him? Benny won. Benny may have won a nonstop trip to the chair. Sweeney give you that money? Uh, that is a private affair, see? And the police have no respect for privacy on occasion. Breckenridge, if you had bet on Soldier Jones as you claimed you did, you'd have lost. You wouldn't have acquired any money or a suspicion of murder. Hey, don't try that. Suppose you didn't really bet on Jones to win. That would make you quite a likely candidate for the wired chair. Are you insinuating? Not at that? all. I'm saying it as bluntly as I can. You could have smeared that ether over Benny's gloves. Did, did Benny say that? No, it's possible he didn't realize it either. I ain't a killer. Never put the ether on Benny's gloves wasn't necessarily intending to kill him. Ether isn't always fatal, but the circumstances made it so. It was a little too much ether, for one thing. For another, somebody failed to allow for the effect of strenuous action on the soldier's heart. Look, Saint, you're, you're just raising the breeze. I'm in the clear, yeah? Uh, would you like to try saying that again and making it sound convincing? This I time? don't have to take anything from you, understand? You don't have to shout, either. What are you trying to hide? Guilt? Fear? I'm getting out. Can I uh, be of any help? Uh, hello, Mr. Sweeney. We've already met. And you, Sam? A Templar. Oh, I'm Louis. Delighted to meet you both. You were saying, Breckenridge? I was saying I'm getting out of here and quick. Hmm. Poor fellow's terribly upset. Or frightened. Whatever else. I wouldn't know. Uh, you were out at the fight tonight. So I was. You were one of the soldier's handlers. True. I find it amusing to act in that capacity from time to time. Did you get any laughs tonight? No, I'm afraid not. Ah, poor soldier. Uh-huh. Also, it's lucky you didn't bet on him, isn't it? What makes you think I didn't? Oh, little bird told me. Little birds are so delicate. They really should be more careful. Well, I'll be sure to tell them that the next time we meet. How does it happen that you bet on Benny? Mm, let's call it whimsy, shall we? Benny didn't belong in the same ring with your man. Well, that made the odds interesting. It would also have put Breckenridge on the spot if Benny had lost. Benny didn't lose. Breckenridge, therefore, delivered. Let us say, off the record, mind you, that... Breckenridge is delivered. Mm, yeah. Come along, Larry. Must you rush away? I uh, don't care for the atmosphere around here, Mr. Sweeney. What's the matter with it? Like the ether on Benny's gloves, Mr. Sweeney, it's uh, overpowering. <laughs> Mr. 
Templin. I know you're making like a detective, but is visiting Peggy really necessary? I just assume not answer that. <laughs> Bashful, huh? Mm. It's a small house. Hey, she must live alone. Get the smirk out of your voice, Louie. Either I'm nuts or you are. And you vote for me, huh? Well, you see, Louie, Peggy may know something. Oh, sure. Only what about? Mm, we better change the subject or ring the doorbell again. Huh? No answer. Come on. Mm. Disappointed? Oh, I don't know. We may still find it tonight. Where? Breckenridge's apartment. Possibly helping him count his money. Breckenridge ain't answering doorbells tonight, neither. Oh, come now, Louie. Give the lad a chance to hide the money. Yeah. Unless he uh, took it on the lamp. Now, where on earth did you pick up that expression? The radio. Oh. Uh, that doesn't seem to work. We'll try another apartment. Get into the building anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you, somebody. The apartment is down the corridor here. Yeah, that's convenient. I hate climbing stairs, making forced conversations. <laughs> You've been shot, man. I've been shot, he that says. Not inside the apartment. Come on. Behind that desk. Yeah, Breckenridge. Not very pretty at the moment. That bullet did a job. Shot in the temple, revolver in his right hand. Suicide? That's what it's supposed to be. His hand loose on the gun. Ain't that the way it always is? After all, the guy is dead. Yeah, but nine times out of ten, there's a spasmodic reaction at the moment of death. The hand grips the gun more tightly instead of loosening. Which means there must be a back door to this apartment. <laughs> Off the kitchen, probably. There it is. Which explains that. The guy's gun ain't gripping the gun tight, so there has to be a back door to the apartment. Oh, the architects ought to hear about this. The murderer had to get out before we got in, and the murderer was here a moment ago. I don't get it. What? Why did he bother making it look like a suicide? Look, Louie, we were supposed to think Breckenridge had been responsible for the soldier's death, but became conscience-stricken because he hadn't intended to kill the soldier and shot himself. But his hand was loose on the gun. It's just logic. All right, so Logic and you went to school together. Breckenridge was a crook also. I suspect a blackmailer, but just a thing. Uh, it almost serves him right. Like I always say, turnabout is hoist with his own petard. Hey, what is a petard? A petard, petard. is a derrick. Oh. Yeah, you've got the proverb all wrong, but you've uh, solved the case. Well, for a dope, I ain't doing it. I have? Yeah, yeah, you said turnabout. Well, I read that in my comic book. And that tells us who murdered Soldier Jones and Breckenridge. Oh, speak for yourself, John. Maybe it tells you, but... Come on, come on. But if I know my mysteries, you're not going to tell me. Not for another five minutes. I know the five minutes ain't up yet, Mr. Templer, but maybe you could sneak in a little explanation now, maybe save some time later. Well, Louis, the problem all along has been who put the ether on Benny's glove. Benny, Breckenridge, Peggy. But then you said turnabout, and I knew who had really put the ether there. Well, never mind the dramatic pauses. Just keep going. The person who put the ether on Benny's glove is a corpse. Yeah, I should have known. For a minute back there, I thought maybe I was going to find out something, but I didn't have to worry. Happy hours, nightclub. But why are we here? They don't keep corpses. Probably not. Besides, who can arrest the corpse? Oh, but you see, the, the corpse wasn't guilty. I'm going home and beat my kids. Maybe that way I'll stop feeling inferior. <laughs> oh, look at the joint is deserted. Yeah. All the little tables covered up with their little white shrouds. Uh, why don't I shut up? Look, there's a light showing. Sweeney's office. Yeah, I wonder. Should we not? Should we go home? We'll knock. Come in, come in. Mm, he sounds quite friendly. Right out of the house. Wow. Well, Mr. Templer, good evening. I've just been having a friendly game of cards with my alibi, my friends. I'd like to see you alone, Mr. Sweeney. Very well. The game had begun to bore me anyway. Boys, get going. All right. You've been uh, playing cards all evening with him? I have. Perhaps you consider it a waste of time. But... I don't. They'd testify to your having been here all evening, huh? Hmm. If called upon, they could do nothing less. But why should they be called upon? To furnish you with an alibi. For what? Breckenridge's murder. Nonsense. He committed suicide. Suicide? How did you know? 
A little bird told me. The same one who told you about my betting on Benny. I'm afraid not. Breckenridge was the little bird who told me about that. He forgot to tell me about the murder, though. Breckenridge committed suicide. I'm not talking about Breckenridge's death. I'm talking about Soldier Jones. Oh? Mr. Templer, I will readily admit I earned a considerable sum by his unfortunate demise, but the ether was on Benny's gloves, if you remember. And I was never near those gloves. True. Well, then. Nevertheless, you are going to die for Jones's death. You know, you're becoming unpleasant. However, you've just admitted I couldn't have tampered with Benny's gloves. I have, but uh, may I mention one word to you? A turnabout. All right, you've mentioned it. You should be more interested because it led me to realize something. Soldier Jones died because there was ether smeared all over his mouth and nose. We've all been assuming that the ether got there from Benny's glove. How true. But remember the word turnabout, Mr. Sweeney? Suppose the ether got onto Benny's gloves from Soldier Jones's face. Uh... I think the hour is late. Very late for you, because the ether was on the soldier's face first. When Benny hit the soldier, he got the ether on his gloves. But it was the soldier's face that smeared ether on Benny's gloves, not vice versa. But how would the soldier get ether on his face first? From a towel used by his handler on him, and you were his handler, Mr. Sweeney. Just as he started into the ring, you wiped his face and deposited the ether on his nose. His momentum carried him into the center of the ring. Benny took a poke at him, and that was that. Was. Yes. Breckenridge realized what you'd done. That's why you paid him off after the fight. <laughs> but you knew that he'd blackmailed you for the rest of your unpleasant life, so you murdered him. That's your guess, and you can't prove I got Soldier Jones. I've got the towel. You're lying. I burned it. Louis will make a nice witness. Let's go chat to policemen about all this, huh? No. Hey, witness, you're pointing, which isn't polite, with a gun, which isn't safe. Yeah. I've very little to lose, and a lot to gain by killing both of you. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's talk this over like civilized gents. I'm sorry. I can't oblige. Therefore... What? You shouldn't have turned your head. <laughs> you better get his gun, Louis. Certainly a pleasure. And I had better take a look at the closet there. Uh, uh, hello? Peggy, who sneezed in time save two anyway. What were you doing in that closet? I was... I was... <gasps> And, uh, so, Peggy? So I hid in the closet so maybe I could overhear a clue. Oh, it was very brave of you, Peggy. Well, I felt I kind of owed it to Breckenridge. Did you love him very much? No, but he was a very friendly fellow. You look friendly, too, Simon. <laughs> also cute. And you did catch Mrs. Sweeney. So I think I'm going to kiss you. Louie is peeking. Who cares? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy... You haven't sneezed. At a time like this, who wants to sneeze? <laughs> How right you are. I, Simon! I... <laughs> you caught my sneeze. I did, didn't I? <laughs> However, as Louie mentioned earlier, I am hoist by your petard. <laughs> you have been listening to another adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, our cast tonight included Sandra Gould, Larry Dobkin, Hal March, Peter Leeds, and Barney Phillips. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Louis Bittes. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen in the Universal International picture, Curtain Call at Cactus Creek. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Doug Gourlay. Next, Sam Spade, then Summer Symphony on NBC.
Welcome back. Well, a nifty solution and a nice start over uh, NBC. And the one thing that's interesting is that the character of Louie uh, would become a recurring uh, character on the Saint. And this kind of goes along with uh, the movies where the Saint would always have some sort of rough and tumble character as his uh, sidekick. And uh, Louis will appear in several episodes throughout the rest of the season. Uh, of course, played by Lawrence Dobkin. All right, well, now on to some listener comments and feedback. And we start with Lori, who writes be regarding episode 1401, The Saint, The Case of the Blonde Who Lost Her Head. I love this episode. Vincent Price sounded like he was laughing through a good portion of it, and I couldn't figure out if it was the accent of the butler or something else that made him giggle. Um, I think he had a good deal of fun on this program, as well as in some other uh, radio. Uh, we Our app extra is a Columbia Workshop uh, episode we, with the Saint that you'll hear later on this month if you have the premium side or the app. And uh, really having some good times. Of course, he was uh, in with Groucho Marx in that production. So uh, uh, comedy, I guess, would come kind of easy. Uh, on the other hand, a uh, comment from uh, Joel who says, Adam, I'm sorry to write that I'm having a hard time sticking with the saint. The fanciful attempts at humor seem like the writers are working so hard to be funny that the plot of the story is secondary. Price is trying to be so sophisticated and clever that the character comes off as cliche. I think that Pat Novak now has a rival for an OTR detective show that leaves me cold. One man's opinion. Well, thanks so much, Joel. I appreciate you uh, always providing uh, honest feedback on how you feel about the series, and uh, certainly not every show is for everyone. Uh, we also do have a comment from uh, Joe, uh, who writes, I've been listening to your program for half a year or better. I really enjoy it. When I started listening via my phone, I del- downloaded a bunch of older episodes, not realizing how often you put new shows. So I've been playing catch-up ever since and having a great time doing it. As of this email, I finished Pat Novak. Great stuff. I'm looking forward to catching up to the Saint, as I really enjoy Vincent Price, but have never heard this radio program. Well, I hope you enjoy it when you get to it, Joe. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with Crime and Peter Chambers. And then next Monday, join us for The Saint. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.